Hi, it's me, Mr. Lurson again. Welcome back for the follow-up to the Principle of Art Balance. Now we're on to our art project that I'd like to call the Kaleidoscope Art. Now, uh, an example that I've done so far teaching this in class uh, is with this. Notice how it is symmetrical, both top to bottom and left to right. And these if you teach it in a class or if you make it yourself or with your friends or family, every single time you do it, it's guaranteed to be unique and original because it is um, an intuitive process. The word intuitive in art means that you are not following a very strict measured formula. You're following a, uh, a few steps, but cutting and drawing where your gut tells you, so you cannot even do the same uh, work of art twice, even if you try. All right, so this is um, an example that has not been colored yet, so we're gonna get, I'm gonna show you how to get your white sheet of paper with a really cool, um, unique design on it. These are the supplies you'll need. One sheet of construction paper. Now, it doesn't really have to be construction paper. It could be just printer paper. The reason that I like construction paper is because it's heavier, uh, thicker, um, so it is easier to cut. And then we use our cut paper as our template or stencil to draw on our substrate. So you need a white sheet of paper, theoretically, because you're going to draw or paint on it. You could do uh, this with just printer paper, um, eight and a half by 11 printer paper. But if you do that, I wouldn't recommend painting on it because it's so thin, it'll uh, wiggle up. So just use dry medium. We're talking about uh, colored pencils, crayons, oil pastels, etc. You'll also need one pencil, a pencil. You'll need a pair of scissors, a pair of scissors. You might benefit from a ruler, not a requirement though. Um, and then after we get to this point here, you're going to need a coloring medium. If you're using some heavier watercolor paper like this is, you can paint it in. Uh, if you aren't using heavy paper, then I recommend using, like I said, a dry medium. Medium in art is the general term for the art supply that you use to create the art. Substrate is the word in art that means what you're making the art on. So if it's an oil painting on canvas, the oil paint is the medium, and the canvas is the substrate. So let's begin. Take your construction paper, fold it in half. Uh, some of the younger kids say, is it hot dog or hamburger? So let's go hamburger. Try to get it uh, as symmetrical and clean as possible. Really crease those lines. You have it like this the book. Fold it again. Hamburger. So perpendicular to your first lines, which means you're folding it at a 90 degree angle opposed, not two parallel folds. Now you have a quartered sheet of paper. I could open it up and then I could open it up again, just like uh, making a card for somebody. All right. So this is the heart of the paper, this internal uh, intersection. We don't want to cut that yet because if you cut along your seams, see how this is this is like the binding for or the seam between two halves and this is like the spine of the book. If you cut those off, you're going to end up having four different pieces. So now that you understand you don't cut the heart so that all four pieces will still have something connecting it together. Um, we're going to get our scissors. Now, uh, this, once again, down here, is the heart. I'm going to hold that in my non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so that goes in my left hand. Now, I'm going to cut. I can also do some cuts along the spine, but remember, don't cut it all. See how I cut all of the exterior perimeter away? Don't do that to the interior because it's going to cut it apart. But you can cut shapes like this. Cut a little window out there. All right, so I have cut a lot of unique shapes. Now let's open it up. It's 
kind of cool. Looks kind of like a mask. All right, so this is phase one. Now I'm going to put this on my paper. Um, you should be laying it flat so you don't have to like tape it up or anything. You're going to use your pencil and trace in literally every line on the inside of the shapes and the outside of the shapes. I'm going to line it up here, put it in the middle of the page. Try to get that evenly spaced in the middle. So now that I have traced everything, the next thing you do, fold it back exactly the way it was. Now you know if it look so this looks pretty good whenever I fold it back. If you fold it accidentally against the angle and you didn't necessarily originally fold it that well and it ends up being duplicated like this, see how they're not lining up, then that's a sign you're not folding it back the way you did the first time. There we go. See how that lines up now? So now we are going to cut more shapes. You don't just simply cut the entire thing. You cut shapes out of the hole. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to open this up. Notice how I did not cut the heart. I still have that holding it together. Now my shape is different. And I'm going to overlay it exactly where it was last time. And I'm going to trace it again adding only the new lines, not the old lines. So if I lay this over the old line, the image, and let's say that line was already there, I don't redraw it. I only add on, like these stars and diamonds, I did not cut those. So I'm not gonna redraw it just because it's there. If the line's already there, it's finished. Only add the new ones. Now, back to drawing. There we are. I've just done this the second time. You're going to do this a total of five times. I'm going to take my image. Here's the heart. Don't cut that away. Now that I've cut it again, I'm going to trace it again. We're getting there. Now, hold it up. I think we've gone three phases. Okay, now I think I'm going to cut this one more time. Oh, cut it in pieces. I cut the heart out. So because I cut the heart out, now it all falls apart. Um, so backup plan. I'm going to do one more round of symmetrical drawing with a ruler. And I really just want to connect some diagonals like if this corner of this mountain or, di or diamond were to be connected all the way through the middle to the other one that is just like it, then that's good. Okay. So I am finished with the drawing. Doesn't really matter which orientation it is at this point. Um, so that's step one, phase one of two phases. Phase one is the drawing and phase two is the coloring. Let me show you an example of a couple colored pieces. Here's one. This is watercolor on paper. This is another one. Colored pencil on paper. Another colored pencil. So there we go. That one was colored pencil for the colored part, then black marker for the part that was filled in with black. And then the idea here is that they are cut off of the white paper and then glue sticked onto a larger sheet of black construction. Here's one that's still on the white paper. So you can see they're all different. One last point. To get the, the proper stained glass kaleidoscope effect, I really want you to try, I really want you to try to make your colors symmetrical. So for instance, if this is yellow, if that's red, orange, or orange, the one over there, the left and right, needs to be the same color. And also, 
mirrored top to bottom. So if you turn it sideways, then the one right here is also the one right there. So it's symmetrical top to bottom and left to right. Yeah. All right. I can't wait to see what you post. Thanks. Bye.